Azure SQL Safe allows you to automate your backup and restore procedures by setting up what's called a policy. All right? You can have multiple policies for backups, restores, um, log shipping as well. So um, you can really leverage this functionality to um, you know, make sure that and view the status of uh, each policy as it runs uh, when it should be uh, scheduled to run here. So let's first go over backup policies here. I already have one uh, set up here, so let's just uh, bring that up. All right, so you give it a, a name, an optional description here. You can choose a uh, format type of SQL Safe and, or SQL Server. Um, I'm obviously going to pick SQL Safe to take advantage of the advanced encryption and, uh, algorithm, and uh, encryption algorithms and compression algorithms. All right. You can choose how you want to run these jobs, either via the SQL Server job agent or the SQL Server backup agent. Each, uh, each uh, instance that you choose to backup with SQL Safe requires a backup agent, which communicates with the management service on the um, SQL Safe uh, uh, repository. All right. Uh, so it's really your choice. I always like to choose the SQL Server job agent. All right. Here's where you choose which instances and databases that you want to back up here. I have two uh, instances that I'm backing up. Uh, I'm choosing to include specific databases here, but you can always choose all, all databases, all user databases, or just all system databases. It really depends on what you're doing. And you can uh, you know add multiple databases over here, uh, control or um, shift to add multiple databases over, remove some databases maybe that you don't want to back up anymore. You can also do a wildcard search here. Okay. So we'll go ahead and click next. Uh, these are your when you're choosing your, your backup uh, types here. All right, I'm choosing to do full and differentials. We can, of course, choose to do logs as well. I have that in another um, uh, backup policy. So uh, I'm just doing a full and uh, differential backup here. I can choose what type of compression that I want, what type of encryption that I want. If I choose an encryption type, I need to remember my encryption key, write that down. One thing that I will always uh, recommend uh, uh, to folks is that they include generate maps so they can uh, do instant restores in virtual database, very fast ways of um, uh, getting a database back online from a backup. All right. And you can do a checksum or, or copy only backup. I'm just going to keep this, uh, keep those unchecked. And again, I'm going to uh, leave these differential settings uh, the same here, generate maps, doing uh, eye size uh, compression here. Okay. Clicking on next, uh, we're choosing the location of where we want to back up these files here. Uh, I'm backing up to a single file. Of course, we have choices to stripe those files. Backup to Tivoli Storage Manager, Data Domain, or a cloud source like uh, Amazon S3 or Azure. We can always back up to tape as well, Tivoli Storage, Man just Tivoli Storage Manager. And you can choose those for uh, different locations for each, um, each backup type. You can also choose to mirror up to two archives as well. All right. For your schedule, since I'm using the SQL Server Job Agent, this should look uh, very uh, familiar to you. You can run these on daily, weekly, monthly basis. I'm choosing to run my fulls on Tuesdays and Fridays and running my differential backups on every other day of the week, of work week, Monday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. All right, you choose the time, choose the, um, if you need to run these uh, multiple times throughout the day, you can choose the time frame you want to run those. You can also choose notifications here. All right, so Maybe if you just want to be notifi notified of backup failures, maybe uh, some other warnings here. Uh, and you will have to configure your email. If you don't already have it configured here, it will let you configure your email here. Okay. And then you can just type it in a email address. Okay. Click next and you're, and you're done here. All right. You can review the summary if maybe you, you forgot a instance or a database, you can go back uh, within the uh, wizard and uh, edit these. Okay. Now, one other thing I will uh, um, mention about notifications here is uh, in your repository management service settings, you can not only send uh, and configure your email settings, but you can also simultaneously send a Windows event log to the management service. So where that central management service uh, interacts with the repository and sends instructions to each uh, SQL 
a management or SQL backup agent on each uh, backup instance here. So please keep that in mind if you need to log events to the Windows event log. This comes in useful if you leverage a log uh, sniffing and an analytics tool like Splunk or Logarithm or, or things like that. Okay. Now uh, let's go through restore policies. All right. So uh, one thing I will mention with uh, setting up a restore policy, it will only restore a full backup at this time. We are looking at possibly adding additional functionality to that, but just please understand that. And setting up a restore policy is good to maybe refresh your non-production uh, databases uh, for um, testing purposes, uh, uh, development purposes, just to get some real uh, kind of realistic data uh, in there for you. All right, so again, we have the choice to create this restore policy using the uh, SQL Server job agent or the backup agent installed on each uh, backup instance, All right? We select the source here, All right? So we're selecting the uh, instance and the actual database, and we can choose where these uh, backup file locations um, are going to um, uh, be where, uh, for uh, this particular restore. So it's essentially going to grab the latest full backup here. All right. Again, we'll want to enable network resiliency just in case we're backing up over the wire, um, over WAN, or we have an IO blip. All right. So if, if it fails for uh, either one of those reasons or any reason, uh, then it will pick up from that point of restore. Okay. We're just going to use our SQL Server Agent Service account here to run this restore. Our target database is going to occur on our WinDC 2012 instance. We'll name this database a little bit differently, SQL Mobile. Uh, we can specify where we want to put the data files, uh, how we want to name them, and which directories. Um, we can also set the database state um, uh, if it's fully accessible, if it's just read-only. Um, uh, then you can specify that. And you can specify also the schedule here. So. Um, uh, you can specify this, you know, same thing that we saw in our backup policy scheduling. Um, you can schedule it weekly, monthly, daily uh, for a specified time or time throughout the, that day. Okay. And then we can also have a few restore options if we want to restore database logins, uh, preserve replication settings, include uh, or ignore checksum errors, and disconnect users. I would recommend disconnecting users just in case you have a rogue process that maybe a developer or someone else did not uh, shut down when they uh, left for the evening. All right. Click Next. Again, you can set your notifications here uh, for um, who you want to send this to in case of a failure or in case it succeeds or anything in between. Again, you have the, um, uh, you have the opportunity to configure your email settings here. If you don't, I already have them set. Click next and you can review your uh, restore policy here. All right. And I've restored, um, I've restored the SQL mobile database. This shows you status for the last seven days. I'll show you how you can report on uh, you know, a longer time frame or range of statuses for not, for not only your policies, but also ad hoc backups, ad hoc restores, etc. Here. I've, I do a lot more backups, so you can see all of that detailed information here. You can double click on any sort of Back up here, you can see the actual compression ratio here. Um, actually, there's one here where I'm getting 96% uh, in access there. Okay. And finally, I have a store policy setup. So for log, or um, I'm sorry, a log shipping policy setup. Um, so log shipping is where um, you uh, you're you're backing up a database and uh, sending over transaction logs every 15 minutes, every five minutes, or however often you want to. Uh, send over those transaction logs so that um, you know you can either have a more backup, uh, uh, you know, have a uh, readable uh, uh, secondary database available for um, you know running reports off of things like that. So um, let's go ahead and go through this uh, policy wizard here. All right. So uh, again, choosing how we want to run, uh, run this log shipping uh, policy here. And here we're uh, we're running back uh, log backups every 15 minutes, um, and also uh, we want to make sure that the secondary um, uh, database uh, that uh, is the log shipped database is no more than 45 minutes old. Otherwise, we'll need to reinitialize. Okay. Here's the schedule we set again. Uh, 
you know, running our log uh, backups on our primary uh, database every 15 minutes, okay? And we set a duration, uh, no end date, or if this is just a temporary test, uh, you can select an end date. Okay. We also have some backup options here uh, for setting your compression level, your encryption, uh, as well as uh, the number of threads to be performing, uh, you know, when you're performing that, that backup. Um, I would I will always recommend the prospects, they uh, just leave it at auto, otherwise if they have other uh, unique restrictions on their uh, server that's being backed up. Okay. So the location uh, is uh, where we're, um, you know, uh, s sending our uh, network backups to. Again, we can mirror to up to two locations here. We're using the service account here. Uh, that's that's uh, that's a SQL Server agent's uh, service account to run these backups. Uh, again, uh, I always like to recommend uh, enabling network resiliency in case there's a blip with the uh, backing up so it'll uh, recover at that point of failure. And then here's the information about uh, what our uh, what, what uh, instance and what database name we are uh, restoring to, right? And we set our schedule on how often we want to restore every 15 minutes, right? And again, no end date. Right? In this case, you can, uh, I'm choosing to leave this uh, database in standby mode, accessible, but read only. And uh, when I'm doing the uh, restore, I can choose to disconnect users when performing that restore. And then finally, we get to notifications. Same deal as before, setting up for failures or and or success, anything in between. You can review your summary, make any changes by going back to anywhere in the wizard that you need to. All right, so here you see the current status of um, my log shipping um, uh, uh, policy here that I have here. You see the, um, the last backup that was taken, the threshold, uh, 15 minutes and the threshold of 45 minutes uh, to keep current on um, uh, no less than 15 minutes here. And the, and the latency is very good, less than a minute here. So you can kind of compare the times these were run at 12.45 uh, at last. All right, so the next time it should run is probably uh, around one o'clock Eastern my time. All right, now to see the status of, uh, of each of these operations, especially your backups and restores, uh, you can, of course, do that in your SQL Safe Today view, although it does show you the last day here. Um, you get a more of an uh, all-encompassing time frame if you look at, uh, at, at, at the server level, even at the uh, database level here. Um, you can see uh, the status here for the last seven days. But uh, you may, if you install the, uh, the SQL Safe web dashboard here, uh, you will get some other options here. So the idea of dashboard is really a federation of all of the SQL Server solutions here. You see I have a bunch of other solutions installed. So I'm already in the SQL Safe portion of the dashboard and I've gone ahead and navigated to the databases section. All right, so here's where we can add filters, look at for specific instances. We can also sort on these columns here. So I'm just sorting on status to see the date of the last full differential and log backup if that applies here as well. So the thing that's nice here, once you add your filters here, uh, you can export this to a PDF file, an Excel file, or an XML file. Another thing, another uh, area where you can actually uh, get some more detailed information on your backup and restore history is in the operation history section here. So I like this page because you can actually, if I sort on the most recent um, uh, recent operation here, I can see that I had some virtual database operations here, um, uh, as well as some other backup and restore operations, as you can see some detailed um, statistics, duration, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the uh, if you're backing up, you can see the, uh, the uh, compression ratio here as well, All right? And again, you can export to PDF, Excel, and XML. And finally, SQL Safe does have a, a handful of reports that you can uh, run from deploy out to reporting services and take advantage of subscriptions and scheduling and on all the different other output options you have available here for you. And that those reports can be found in your program files, IDARA, 
SQL Safe, SQL Safe Reports. All you have to do is just right click and uh, um, run this reporting services installer as an administrator and uh, tell it where your reporting services instance is. And uh, I would suggest um, adding a new folder uh, uh, to, to kind of separate out these reports uh, in reporting services here. So I have reporting services up and a few reports uh, that I want to uh, show you here uh, is of course the uh, last backup report. All right, so uh, I can choose uh, by database type or just choose all database types and I can choose all servers or just a single instance here. So I can see the last uh, type of backup and the last date uh, and last status of each database on each instance that uh, these um, backups occurred here. Another report that you may want to run here is the SQL Safe Restore Databases report here. So you're given a week time frame by default. I think that looks good. All right. And I can sort by database, username, or start date here. All right. Let me go ahead and sort by start date. And I can view this report here. So um, I have, this is, uh, this log shipping is, uh, this is a log shipping entry here where I'm restoring the log to my destination server here. If we just go to the end of the report, we can see some other, uh, restores that happened and navigate through this report. We can output it to a variety of different, uh, reporting services options. All right. So that's how you set up backup, restore, and log shipping policies. I hope you've enjoyed this video and just so you know, you can download a fully functional 14-day trial of SQL Safe by navigating to the idera.com website under products, select SQL Safe Backup, and then you have a link to start your 14-day free trial. Thank you and have a great day.